So how has it been touring with Something Rotten? It's been fantastic. One of the reasons I took the tour was because we were going to all these towns that I've never been to and would probably have no reason to visit otherwise. And it's done exactly what I hoped it would in the sense that, you know, we do shows at night and on the weekends, but during the days I'm able to go out and see these areas for the first time and kind of see the best they have to offer as far as attractions and sightseeing and museums and all this kind of stuff and restaurants and everything. And it sort of is everything I hoped it would be. You get very used to a New York audience playing in New York all the time. And it turns out most of these towns are just so hungry for a great musical theater laugh that we come in and we feel like rock stars having this great time and there's something really fantastic about being able to give this show and all these laughs to these people town after town. It's just very rewarding and kind of fulfilling in a way that I didn't even expect. So I'm having a great time. You've been with the show since joining the Broadway company last summer, and now you're touring with two of your co-stars from the closing cast, Rob McClure and Adam Pascal. But what's it like getting to perform with them? Rob is, it, it's eerie how similar we are and how similar our brains work. We basically are like twin brothers. It's creepy how similar we are. It, it really is nothing but a joy. The only difference between me and Rob is that Rob is smarter and more talented and he's a nicer guy. Other than those things, we're awfully alike. So I really look up to the guy, you know, as a professional, I look up to him as a human being. I look up to him, so it's really easy to play his younger brother who just like in real life, looks up to his big brother. So I can't say enough good things about him. And then Adam is one of those guys that when you first start working with him, you're afraid, you know, look, this is Adam Pascal. He's a huge deal in the theater world. Everybody knows who he is. And he's kind of a rock star, literally. His career has kind of been made off of singing rock music, which is where he started. So there was this fear that, you know, he might be just the most difficult guy in the world to work with, because if he was... I would completely understand why. And yet, he is the most down-to-earth, chill guy who is so much fun to play with on stage and off. We really have just gotten so lucky. And I'm not sure if that's just part of Casey Nicola's MO, that he only casts people in his shows that are genuinely good human beings. But we've had nothing but good luck in that department on Broadway and on the tour. So it really is a pleasure to work with these people. So me having seen Something Rotten during its first year on Broadway, it really is such a fun, clever, original musical comedy with lots of heart. What has been the most challenging thing about doing a show like this? I mean, like any comedy, it's challenging if your audience isn't willing to take the ride with you as far as giving a response back. And it's not to say that people don't like it or aren't enjoying it, but there are some audiences that are just quiet. And it becomes safety in numbers, like once an audience decides it's going to be quiet, people who start wanting to laugh out loud or clap more or hoot and holler, they're not going to because they're afraid other people in the audience are going to judge them for it. So it just becomes a downward spiral. That can happen at any theater at any time. And luckily with something rotten, one of the great things about it is that it rarely ever happens. But I'd say that the only difficult thing with doing something rotten is the same difficulty that happens in Anytime you do any comedy, it's, it's a bad audience. It's the scariest thing to have to go out and do big, broad comedy when people aren't responsive. But other than that, I'm literally having to go to a generic kind of answer because, at least for me, Nigel is such a great role and such a great track. He carries just enough of the show to be pivotal to the plot and to have these great comic moments and these great heartfelt moments but he also isn't on stage the entire show he gets to take a break here and there and i get to sit back and watch people like rob mcclure and adam pascal work their balls off all night long it's a great balance of work and play for me it would be silly for me to complain about anything because there's not really anything there to complain about from having done my research i did find out one thing on wikipedia is it true you attended high school at the north carolina school of the arts I certainly did. One of the best experiences of my educational academic life. North Carolina School of the Arts really gave me the foundation for acting instincts that really led to my entire career, I think. Because what I did after that was I went to a musical theater school where instead of just studying one art form, acting, you're studying three art forms, acting, dancing, and singing. You're never going to master all three art forms in four-year program. So I feel like that extra year that I got to spend on the campus at North Carolina was pivotal to really giving me the full range of tools that I have in my sort of actor's tool bag now as a professional. So I look back on that time as a very sort of sacred time. And man, I learned so much and had such a blast. When you guys come to Durham in a couple of weeks, what's one thing you're most looking forward to about returning home? 
Yeah, you know, Durham is the closest that I will come on this tour to my hometown, which is in Roanoke, Virginia. So I have large amount of family and friends coming to see the show while we're in Durham for that reason. So it really is an exciting thing. It's a little bit of a reunion for me to see some people that I haven't seen in years and to perform for some people who have known about my career for you know 12 years but have never actually seen me perform because it's hard to fly to New York and pay to see a big show and all that stuff. So this is a chance for me to connect with some of my family and friends that I've never had a chance to connect with as far as my career goes. So I'm excited to connect these dots. Durham is pivotal to that. But hey, as they say, if the mountain can't go to Muhammad, Muhammad must go to the mountain. There you go. Exactly. Not that I'm comparing myself to Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I also saw that you were a series regular on a short-lived ABC series titled The Knights of Prosperity. That was a really funny, bizarre, sort of ahead-of-its-time series that happened back in 2007 that paid off college for me, even mm -hmm. though it only ran for one season. I mean, it was a life-changer for me at the time and got me in the door for L.A. recognition. It's one of the reasons why I'm able to spend some time in L.A., you know, splitting my time between it, Los Angeles in New York is because of that TV show happened and that was a completely out of left field thing it was about a year after I graduated college but again it's stuff I look back on now and think how lucky I was to have been a part of that and to work with some amazing people and everybody in that cast has gone on to do bigger and more amazing things <laughs> including Sofia Vergara the next show she did was Modern Family which mm -hmm. took off and made her a big big celebrity here but Maz Gibrani and Donald Logue and Lenny Benito these people that you may not know by name but if you saw them you'd be like oh it's that guy from that thing and I love that and it happens to me I'm watching TV and all of a sudden oh it's Donald he's on that show now that's amazing mm -hmm. I love seeing him work it's part of the joy of being in this business is to watch your friends and your colleagues continue to prosper there's not a better feeling than that and you also made your Broadway debut a couple years ago and it should have been you or you must have hit the jackpot with that cast and creative team you got to work with there's a few of those people that exist in the community that every time you mention their names anybody who's ever worked with them goes oh you're gonna get to work with blank rob mcclure is one of those people but david hyde pierce is one of those people and even sierra vargas is one of those people as soon as you mention the names people melt a little and you know these are such genuine good people because when you take somebody who's ridiculously talented and then you layer on the fact that they're just sublime human beings who are empathetic and nurturing and inquisitive and have just the spark of life in them everything ceases to be work and work becomes pleasure it just becomes such a great thing to be a part of i was so lucky to have been working on it should have been you as my true you know broadway debut with that amazing company of people. And after that, you got to be in the Broadway-bound production of Prince of Broadway in Tokyo. Yeah, and one of the only sad parts about me being on tour for as long as I'm going to be is that I can't be a part of the Prince of Broadway company when it comes to New York. It's going to Manhattan Theatre Club this right. summer. It's just one of those business things that happens. Sometimes you get tied up in one thing and can't get out to do another. But man, it was an experience going to Japan with Hal Prince and Susan Stroman and Tony Yazbek and Ramin Karamalu and these amazing people will forever be a memory deeply ingrained in my mind. We had such an amazing time and doing such a work of celebration to celebrate that man's ridiculous career and his legacy it was really a magical thing. And I really wish I could still be a part of it in New York. And I'm sure you're at least proud of the fact that it's going to have another life. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure that after New York, it'll still have a life somewhere, whether it goes on tour or what. But it's one of those strange things that you think, oh, it's just a review. I'll just go and see it. But then you're sitting there and you realize that what could just seem like the best of Broadway, like a generic musical theater review, is actually stuff that Hal Prince directly was part of creating. He was just part of almost anything that truly mattered in the theater mm -hmm. for decades. And when you string it all together, it's sort of overwhelming. People sometimes would cry at the end of the overture because once you string it all together, it's just so powerful. If you love this music and you know some of the history of theater, it's a real special show. So I hope it comes in with great fanfare when it gets to New York and that people love it as much as I did. What advice would you like to give to any aspiring young performers out there? I would say in that early stage, it's hard for everybody. Everybody has these pounding the pavement, cutting your teeth stories from when they were young. And to not be incredibly discouraged by that, but to just know that that's part of the ritual, becoming a professional in this business, is working your way up. So just take any job you can, get any experience you can, be the best person you can be. You can't be the era of being super talented and not pleasant to work with. 
there's just too many really talented people to deal with people who aren't kind to one another and who don't take care of the other players on the team. Josh, I thank you very much for devoting your time to this interview, and I hope you have a great time in Durham. Thank you very much. I look forward to it.